Real good day, actually. Yeah. Um. Yeah, I worked a little bit. I uh, set up my online store, which was pretty cool. I've been uh, waiting to do that for a while. Yeah, that's that is pretty dope. I haven't got a chance to check it out yet. Yeah, dude, check it out. It's just uh, just 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 now started. So I mean, it's just um. Well, just at first, like when you sent it to me earlier today, it wouldn't like it, it wasn't pulling anything up yeah well i mean i hadn't posted anything with it you know when i made it. it took me a few hours to put everything up and take photos and stuff uh, i see i see i thought it was like uh, a privacy thing too. yeah no 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 i um i just now got everything up uh, okay, <laughs> okay. I, I see i see but I'll, um, I'll definitely check it out yeah dude check it out man i'm um i'm 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 pretty pumped with it i'm, I'm excited to see where it's gonna go that's what's up. Um, but yeah, dude, you ready to get this uh, fucker started? Yeah. Yeah. All right. For sure. All right, cool. All right, well, um, let's get it going. Welcome back to another episode of Body Language Podcast. This is episode 37. Thank you guys for tuning in with us tonight. I got one of my best friends with me, Dax Norris. You've uh, known him from episode 32. Were you on 32 or 33? I think it was 32. 32, 32. Um, yeah, he is a um, herbal connoisseur, musician, multifaceted laborer, and a good dude. So put your hands together for Dak Norris. My bar. Thank you, thank you, thank you. <laughs> yeah, man, I, I, uh, I appreciate you doing this like such short notice. I was thinking, I was like, you know, I don't want to wait till the fifteenth to shoot our podcast. Like I'm, I'm feeling good tonight. It was a good day. Worked a little bit. Got my store set up. Like I felt good. I was like, I want to, I want to shoot this thing tonight. I want to talk. I want to talk to Dax tonight. That's what's up, dude. Yeah, I, uh, I tried calling you earlier today. I think. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You did. You did. You did. You did. But I was, um, I was working. Yeah, yeah. But I was uh, making a money. Yeah, dude. I, I actually really wanted to. Like, I was I was ready for it. So as soon as you said it, I was like, "Fuck yeah, let's do it." <laughs> they do it. Oh yeah, dude. Well, I'm glad we're here tonight, man. I'm glad we're I'm glad we're here together, dude. Like I said last time, you and Dustin uh, are my favorite guests thus far. Um, um, yeah, man. I like talking with you guys. Other than Bailey, of course. You know, Bailey's my dog. But he doesn't want to shoot podcasts with me anymore. I think his girlfriend's swaying him other, uh, towards another direction, you know? Right. Well, I mean, Bailey's, Bailey's a cool guy. I like Bailey a lot. That's a great guy. I've only, I've only met him a handful of times, but I, I like him. Yeah, shout out Bailey, dickhead. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I love him, man. He's a good dude. Yeah. Y'all are a lot alike, man. You, Ryan... Bailey, Dan, y'all are all a lot of like, man. You're all brunettes. You're all like large wrestle, tight end kind of size sort of dudes. <laughs> aside from that, aside from having that in common. Right. Uh, but yeah, dude, like, how, how's everybody? How's the family and all that jazz? Family's good, man. We had a good Christmas. It was short, you know. We we did a um, we did <clears throat> like a three trip Christmas that normally is like a six trip trip Christmas. Um, I don't know. Did we just? I don't know, man. Zipped it out in like three days and got back home, unpacked everything, and got back to work. And here we are, man. Normally we got a two week vacation. We got um, we've got this like huge miraculous like visitation plan between like families and friends and things like that and we didn't get any of that done because of COVID you know we we zipped to my grandmother's did Christmas Eve zip back home did Christmas with my parents the next day <clears throat> got up went to Birmingham did Christmas day after Christmas Christmas with Jessica's family and then the next 
day we stayed and visited and then the next morning the 28th we got up and came home so yeah dude we didn't dude miss dude miss abby chris's mom she got covid uh my aunt decided not to do both my aunts two of my three aunts decided to not do christmas with us this year because of covid um money was weird because of covid um i wanted to get back to work it's just i mean literally covid stopped us in every direction with visitation with friends and family and then i had fan, i had friends that were down here that i couldn't see because i was up there visiting family so it was like it was all a big huge fucking cluster fuck dude or it's the holidays that usually is. Yeah. Yeah, man, it's weird, dude. I uh, <clears throat> I didn't know how to deal with it, but um, here I am. I'm dealing with it. Fuck yeah. yeah. Well, I, I started in on telling you a story the other day, but you were on your way back. And, uh, but I was telling you about how Bree uh, completely fucked up her Christmas present. Oh, that's right. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I mean, just, just royally it. Like, on she it. She didn't get anything, bro. I, I feel bad because she didn't get nothing. Because she, okay, I was gonna propose and I had it all set up. I had it like we were gonna, we were going to do pictures, and uh, we were just gonna do Christmas pictures, and. Um, and we, then we were supposed to go to her brother's for <laughs> Christmas, which he lives like right outside of Chicago. Because I didn't, I didn't hear back from you. Like I didn't know what you were doing, so we were we just decided to go there. But that wound up falling through. So we we were just going to do pictures. Well, um. Bree wound up going out on a fr- what was it Friday night? Yeah, Christmas was a Friday. Christmas Eve was Thursday. Night. It was a Friday before Christmas, and I was going to propose on Wednesday. Well, she Thursday. She was going out with her friend on that previous Friday. Well, right. <clears throat> she went out with her friend. And that's all she could think about is what she was, what she, what could she possibly be getting? Well, she pieced it together with her friend, and then she let the cat out of the bag once she got home. We're sitting. So, here so she told you she thought that she was going to get proposed to by you. Well, she said that she thought she was getting a ring, and I was like, "Damn." And without like. I could have, at that point, she already knew. So I was like, how, how the fuck do you even know that? So it was, it was, a, it was, an, issue. It was an issue. So that was, that was my Christmas. That was how that went. Other than that, Everett got a pretty kick-ass, uh, I think it's called Rolling Roby, and it's pretty, pretty cool. Well, did you propose? No. Nope. Good. Was she pissed about it? Yep. Okay, well, let her be pissed. She'll get over it when you have a magical moment and you actually do get to propose, and it's Thank fucking you. fireworks. She'll she'll Thank get you. way over Thank that. You. Thank you, dude. And I even went to the extent of sending the ring back. Oh. Okay, yep. so you're so like you're for real. Like we're waiting. This is we're waiting. Period. Yep. Okay. Because it's, it's, it's like you already know I have the ring, so like you'll be like anything that we go to do, you'll be like, oh wait, is this it? Because this is where he's gonna do it at. Like, well, now you have so, to wait a few months. Now you have to like kill the anticipation. You have to let it dull down a little bit. <laughs> that sucks, man. I'm sorry to hear that. I'm laughing, but it's that that does suck. I'm sorry to hear that. It's okay. We've got, we've worked through it, you know, it's, uh, but I was, I was pretty bitter about it for a few days, because, like, it was just one of those things, like, she's been throwing a lot of dicks out here lately, like, when am I going to get a ring, this kind of stuff, and, you know, I mean, I've, I've been planning to do it, I just, you know, waiting yeah. for the right time and funds and things like that. And well, y'all been to, how long y'all been together, what, two years? Two years. 
Yeah, so I mean, I guess it's, you know. Well, what'd she get you? Uh, she got me a weighted blanket. Word. With that I've been wanting. Word. She got me this John Wick game that is not as good as be expected. Like, it's a weird game. Well, We're shit. Get into that. Dude, that's the thing about games, man. They're hit or miss sometimes, dude. Commercials are a hell of a thing. They're hit or miss. This one's just weird. Like, it's, it's like... I, I don't know. It's just weird. But anyway, got that and weighted blanket. Um, I got some, like... It, it's for my dad rig that I have. I've got, like, there's little beads. That you can put in the yeah to keep uh, it from hanger. from getting all nasty and resiny and shit. Yeah, she got yeah, me yeah. some of those. So. Well, that's that cool. Pretty cool. Well, hell yeah. Well, I mean, I hate that your proposal got fucked up, but sounds like you had a decent Christmas. Yeah, it wasn't bad. Like I mean, I, I enjoyed my gifts and I enjoyed the time off with my family and whatnot. We kind of we were sick for Christmas, so. Y'all were. Yeah, we were. Oh, that's what you told me the other day. You said it probably ended up being best that we didn't come out because y'all ended up being sick. Yeah, but Bree went and got tested, and Everett went to the doctor, and they, uh, she didn't have, she tested negative, and then uh, they didn't even test Everett. They just said that he had a cold. So. Okay. Well, I mean that's good. No COVID, I guess. Yeah. Oh, but shit. we had a few outbreaks at work. Fuck that. So, I mean... I mean, I what mean, does a company do in a moment like that? Like, say you have a company of eight people and one's been exposed to COVID. What do you do? Well, that's the like, thing. Like, what, do you, like, what, do you, what are you supposed to do? Like, because everyone else there, does the whole business shut down? Or do you... No. Because you've all been exposed to it, so what's the deal with that? Well, they said it has to be, like, within, like, I don't know, arms reach for, like, 15 minutes is what they were saying, is what some, like, one of my bosses, bosses had looked up, because, like, he was curious, and he wound up, even he wound up testing positive. Shit. And, um, so... But it wound up being one of the guys in the shop that worked with me that tested positive. And, uh, all, first, all around, you know, that happened last Monday. And then it was just a chain reaction, like four of them now. So both the bosses, one of the shop guys and one of the boss's daughters. So, there's a few people, but, I mean, everybody else is doing fine. Like, I mean, nobody, and, I mean, nobody's sick or coughing or anything, you know? So, they just go about their business, and that's how they hold it. Dude, Like, I- like if you weren't in that vicinity for more than 15 minutes, that arm reach or whatever... You know, just uh, go about your business, pretty much. But they, they, like, I don't know. There's just no telling, dude. So they just, I stayed out. I went to work Monday, and then I stayed out Tuesday through Christmas and the weekend. And I went back to work Monday. And, I mean, I'm fine. I'm not... Do you think you may be asymptomatic to it, or do you think you're just, like, you're just good? I, I'm good. Like, I mean, I don't feel like shit or nothing. I ain't, like, I've got smoker's cough, but... Yeah, we... Other, <laughs> you know? We all got smoker's cough. Well, shit, yeah, man, dude. I mean... I, I don't know, man. I'm just terrified of COVID. Like, uh, I feel like I've already had it, uh, but I'm so terrified of everybody in my family getting it. Um, I feel the same, you know? but... Well, I don't, I'm not afraid of it because I think everybody's going to get it anyway. Yeah, but I would rather everybody get it when the vaccination is, like, good to go rather than just a beginner sketchy 
Well, dude, the way I look Damn. at it, man, is I, it's going to take some I, time for like some of those kinks to be worked out. I'm sure most of them have already been worked out, but I feel like there's personally just my personal view. I feel like there's going to be some things that need to be worked on before the mass public gets a vaccination. I feel like if you're young and healthy, you've got no problem. Well, I'm not young and healthy. I'm 32, and I have a hardening liver, and I eat a bunch of garbage, and I work out once a week. And it's a poor workout. <laughs> it's not even a good workout. I mean, shit. So I don't know. I don't know. I mean, I have mixed views on the situation. I'm just glad that you don't got it. And my my cousin, my aunt, my uncle, they all got it. Um, I feel like I had it. My sister had it. Um, who else had it? I think that's it. Oh, My I, family that's had it, to be honest. Not, not to interrupt you, bro, but I, I, I sparked that blunt up. Got it. Right. <laughs> Are you smoking down? <laughs> yeah. Uh, that's awesome, man. Dude, I think that's a dope that you live in a green state. And I wish that was uh, how it was here. Eventually, my friend. Eventually, it will happen. Yeah, I would imagine so, man. People say it will be the last. The next, I would say, with, like, realistically, within the next two to five years. Well, that's what I said five years ago, so I'm going to give it, a, like, a decade or less now. My bid has gone up. <laughs> a dec- now, a ten years or less now or is what we're, I feel like we're looking at. I mean, look how fast they move. It's already medical, though, ain't it? Yeah, it's me- we're here? Yeah. No. No, no. I mean, like, you have to have, like, like, I think there's, like, severe hospitalization circumstances where they'll give you, like, medicinal cannabis in the state of Alabama. You can't just, like, be depressed or have a bad back or glaucoma and get weed here. That's a Florida thing. But you can get a medical card. No, I think, like, if you're... I think like if you're hospital, I'm not, and don't quote me on this. I mean, I'm sure you can Google it uh, and get like the exact facts. But from my understanding, we do not have any sort of card system yet. We are like, if you're in the hospital and your terms and symptoms call for cannabis, I think that there's ways for Alabama to serve you cannabis if you're in the hospital, but you can't just go get tested for that shit you can't just have, go get a card or anything like that we're, n- we're not quite right. there yet right yeah. but hey speaking yeah. of we're about to take a break real quick um we have a sponsor you know the shop we were talking about earlier that we oh, opened yeah. up that's gonna open that we're gonna sp- i'm gonna you know my wife and 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 mine's and i's store are gonna sponsor the podcast we're gonna do jnt uh, online thrift store sponsorship. Hell yeah, dude! That's yeah. what's up. Yeah, man. I think yeah, we're gonna give everybody like a. T- and, you know, it's a pretty affordable thrift store anyway, so we're gonna give everybody like a ten percent code to use. Um, and I'm also working on one more sponsor because you know we had Golf to Go and Delivery.com as a sponsor for a while, but they jumped ship because I jumped ship and started working for myself again and started working for other delivery companies and things like that. Um, but we are going to start with JNT and then move to maybe a second sponsor. It's still in the works right now, though. Hell yeah, dude. That's what's up. I'm pretty pumped on it. I'm pretty pumped. But look, um, we're going to take a quick break. Uh, I'm going to pause this entire thing real quick, and um, we will be right back. Dax, you can stay on the line, okay? All right. Okay. We will be right back. Body language, like and subscribe if you haven't already. If you have, thank you very much. If you haven't, fuck you. Do it now. Uh, give us five. We'll be right back. Fucker, they play, and it pisses me off so bad. And not only that, but like my buddy David, he'll fucking uh, he called me the other day, and he was like, "Hey man, uh, I was gonna come." and see you on Christmas, but, uh, it was, it was too late, you know, and I was like, Bree was like, we were up till like two in the morning. Waiting on him? On Do what? Waiting on him? No, not waiting on him, just, just like, just we were up, up, just up know, at two in the morning, yeah, yeah. 
I, I'm pretty sure we we were drinking on Christmas. That's what me and Bree did. Like we were. Who doesn't sick, drink on we Christmas? Everybody doesn't drink out. on Christmas. Anyone? We all drink on Christmas. <laughs> Everybody drinks on Christmas, man. We all drink on Christmas. <laughs> yeah. Uh, amen, my brother. We we fucking uh, we uh, finished a whole bottle. Or uh, well, uh, I won't say a whole bottle, but a. Uh, Sounds pint good. of Rumbleman. Ooh. And Dude, the whole audience, anyone watching this podcast, just they, everyone just went, ooh. ooh. A- everybody watching this podcast, not a single person excluded, just went, oh. <laughs> they went, oh, Dax. <laughs> Dax, oh, my brother. <laughs> It was good though, man, and it fit. It fit. It's it was so good. And uh, we drank Ooh, that. So good. And not Creek. Do do whiskey shots. Hell yeah. Yeah. And I got a I got a Sam Adams right now. Oh, dude, drink I'm drinking on a White Claw. I got a White Clouge. I gotta send a I, white cloud. Dude, I I got on a kick of those and like after like being down there and hanging out with y'all, I got on like got on a kick of those even when I came back home. And then I I sometimes when I'm at lunch, there's this bar that opens up on Thursdays. And sometimes when, you know, I go in there for lunch, I have beer or two with my lunch. Hell yeah. Don't incriminate so, yourself on the podcast, dude. <laughs> are we back on the on podcast? Now? Don't incriminate yourself on the podcast. Okay. Yeah. But I'm just saying. <laughs> <laughs> I'm pretty sure nobody from your job cares about podcasts nor even... Mm, not really. They no. don't give a shit about podcasts where yeah. you work. No. Hell, but, most people here don't even give a shit about podcasts, much dude, less my like, podcast. It's thing. Like, it's not just me, though. Like, when I go in there for lunch, there's all kinds of dudes. There's, there's fucking, uh, like, electricians and shit like that. Like, uh, people, like, power companies. Yeah. That are in there. And they, they drink beer on that lunch hour. Wait, like in the in the office or like in the restaurant that you go? No, in the restaurant that I go to. Uh, the okay, because like a okay. bar and grill that I go to for lunch. Cool. Well, hell yeah, dude. I mean, that's. But I mean, it's it's a roughneck area, dude. Okay. Like it's just oil fields out here. So, like that kind of stuff's just to be expected, kind of. Do you feel like your entire life is just trying to fight off? whatever life living there could bring you in any aspect possible because it almost seems like when you live in a place that's like that it's a very small threat uh, of culture but that culture can infiltrate who you are personality wise and change you I've seen it happen to a few friends and, and you not even know that it happened it's happening that it's happened but you do it <clears throat> because you don't even know you're doing it and then you have like a hindsight and you're just like what has happened to me like your my your constant existence there well, in a place just, that's like that is fighting off developing a personality that you fucking hate <laughs> right and like I don't know dude I, I can't <sighs> I don't know. I, I don't I don't even like I hate it up here. I can't stand it. I don't like it's just not my type of environment. You know what I mean? It's not my type of yeah. people. Yeah, I do. Like I mean, it's not to say that like the people that I've met are nice and everything, but it's just like there's only like maybe 
I don't know, five people that I fuck with in in a whole in in my whole year of being here. So like which isn't really a long time to be somewhere. But yeah, you're right. It, it is a legal state and it's it's cool in that aspect, but I mean it's just I did the illegal stuff for so long that it's no it's like it's nothing for me to go back home and do that. You know what I mean? Like if I could be happier being back home, that's what I would rather do. And me and Bree have talked about going back home. But right now, we just can't afford it because she's not even working right now, and so it's just me. And I mean, she gets her unemployment and stuff, but uh, I mean, so that I, there's no way we could just do that down there. I would be working two jobs probably and never at home. So. Yeah, no, I understand that. I feel that. I've had that conversation with quite a few people, some of which I was referencing earlier about losing their more stable personality by living in an area that is unstable to their personality, previous personality. Well, Um, I mean... You know, know. so I feel that. No, I really do, man, because we, we, we had to move to a town 10 minutes north of where we were because... Uh, We couldn't afford where we were. I mean, we could afford where we were, but we weren't comfortable. You know, we were always like Owen's, you know, money to to, to some sort of company. Or we were always not necessarily in debt because we've never been in the 10 or 11 years that I've had a family. Jessica and I have never really been in debt, but for real, for real. Um, So... Instead of just hawking up everything that we were making with my job and her job and her side hustle and my side hustle, it was just like not worth it anymore. It was like, we want to be able to profit from these things. And in order for us to profit from these things, we have to either move further south or north. And so we did. We moved 10, 15 minutes north to a new town off the island. And now we can live a little bit, not completely comfortable but a little bit more comfortable than we did so i completely understand having to live somewhere else in order to um have some sort of stability uh within your family i get it yeah i mean it just winds up being a lot in the end because like i don't know i'm an all or nothing kind of individual yeah, I am like that. I used to be really, really hardcore with that, but now I'm, I got some slack in it. But yeah, I know I feel that. And so, like, it not having friends around me, like somebody that I can just be like, yeah, Yo, what are you doing right now? Like, <laughs> yeah, man, yeah, I'm like, like, hey, I'm gonna stop by. Yeah, yeah, like. <laughs> And nobody is like that here, dude. It's like, well, it's like a, I don't know, man. Like, I, I kind of just like, I don't feel like doing nothing, you know. Well, sometimes it'd be like, like that, and sometimes, like I said, that's the personality that you're trying to avoid with. Right, and it's just, you know, being in that area. Nothing to do with that area, just those specific people and their chosen mindsets, you know. And I mean, we've we've had friends too that you know we make plans with, and and they just they flake on us, man. Like, yeah. like on some well, occasions. I mean, it's not to say whenever y'all move back here or we move somewhere where y'all are uh, in the future or wherever you know life takes us that plan. I mean, that's just that's a happen that happens with adulthood. I'd like to say. Well, sometimes. I mean, it's not just you guys either. Like, you know, I just have. But but it's the it's the heaviness of the flakiness, right? It's like the it's the volume of it. <laughs> it's not just the flakiness; it's the volume. It's like once, well, twice, it's fine. Not, it's not but if you're like, like in your tens, then fuck you, man. <laughs> it's, it's not even like that. Like, okay, my buddy Dave or David, like he is going to watch this podcast or listen to it, 
And, hey, David. How you doing, buddy? Uh, Good to see you. Like, me and him have had an honest relationship. His name is Bree's cousin. Oh, cool. Okay. So, it's family. And, and uh, he's a younger dude, you know. And But I just, I fuck with him. I've liked him since we moved here, you know. He's just a good kid. Well, <clears throat> I always call him on his bullshit. I tell him when he's fucking up. Like, especially, like, if you're falling short in the friendship area, dude, I'm gonna tell you. I'm gonna tell you. Like, if you, if you ain't calling, if you ain't, like, checking in every once in a while, and I'm bad at it, too. Especially with my friends that are further away from me. Well, I'm it's bad hard, at man. it, but... It's hard. It's a hard thing to do. It's a hard it's a hard task to keep up unless you're really passionate about the bond you have with that person. Right. But I mean there's other things too that I have now. Like you know, I got it's not just going to work and coming home and you know doing whatever the fuck I want. I you know, I got a family at home now, so it's like having to figure out how to split my time up with that. And then, like, when we do have free time, like, there's just nobody, like, we, we spend a lot of our free time with, our, with each other, with, like, me and Bree, but there's nobody else, you know what I mean? I'm like, some, sometimes you like to have other people to have, it just adds to the conversation, you know what I mean? Yeah, that's true. I'm a, well, you know, Jessica and I have ha- had that conversation a few times where we've we've considered like our personal, like our personalities with each other outwardly towards our social circle because throughout the years, just like I hope, or not hope, but would assume that most people, you know, their social circle dwindles and you have that problematic fight with your internal self of like, am I a piece of shit? Am I an asshole? Am I not worth hanging out with? Am I this? Am I that? It's like so many different things that you think about. And like you put yourself through these unnecessary bullshit motions that sometimes end up being healthy in their own weird fucked up way. Uh, And they teach you that not everybody that you meet in life is important because my social circle bloomed in like the mid 2000s to like 2010 12 ish so i had like all these band friends and then some of those band friends became sort of semi-famous and then some photographer friends and artist friends and all these people that were doing all these cool creatives that were getting somewhere with it and i felt like because i was a creator i was like not riding coattails but i was like in that stream of shit And then throughout the years where people either made it or lost interest and fell off or did something else and moved away and so on and so forth, you find that these people that you make your friends are not necessarily your friends in the end for the long run, you know, and the ones that stay on your Instagram or your Facebook or in your text message board, your message board, five, six years down the road after you've kind of already had that mental breakthrough you find like, oh, okay, like I've already had that moment. These people are still here. It's safe to call them like, at at the very least, just like a friend, you know? Right. Well, that's, dude, it's so fucking funny that you say that, you know, you, you, you sit there and you think about, well, is it like, is it the fact that am I a shitty person? Am I like not worth hanging out with or... Yeah, you, you question know. yourself sometimes, for sure, by accident, you know? But it's like, at the same time... I don't know. I don't want to say that, because then that makes you sound a little, you know, like... Well, I'm, I, know that it, I know that that's not it, you know what I mean? Like, it's not like that, it's just like... I, mean, I feel like I'm good company. You know? You're definitely a good company, yeah. dude. I love you, man. I've known you for what seven or eight years now. We had like a three-year yeah. fallout, and it's been sandwiched with two and a half good years on both ends. And I think it's great, man. I think our relationship is great. 
I love I, I love you, man. I love your family. I love knowing you. I love that we like knew each other through like a portion of my life where you could say something kick ass about me at my funeral <laughs> and then I can also turn around and say that I knew you at a point at a point where you were I wouldn't say 100% different than you are now but I'd say like maybe 70% different than you are now oh yeah I was way different but I was still pretty young too when I first met you that is true we were both young well this is true I have, a, I have a dude like I, I guess I'm it, the world is only happening to me sometimes you know <laughs> I feel that I do I feel that <laughs> hey look I'm doing something different tonight man I'm doing a uh, a non-stationary mic I'm doing a handheld mic tonight uh, instead of a stationary mic you'll, I mean you'll see it on the video but you know I normally do like an arm or I'll do like um you know like a swing arm or some shit but I got a handheld mic tonight and I'm kind of got like a freelance like first person view fo- uh, podcast going on tonight Word. and I'm thinking about it if if you're cool with it I'm thinking about making it a black and white episode that's cool not that it matters to you because you're not in it I'm not, I'm not there so it really doesn't matter but you know uh, I think funny. it's cool I like, I, I, I like the black and white stuff cool I would have agreed to it even if I was there Dude, I wish you and Bree and and uh, little E Money would move to Orlando with us um, next year when we move. I mean, we're, I say next year like tentatively. We were supposed to move in 2021, but clearly that fucked everything up. But we would like to move to Orlando in like 2022, early 2022. It would be really great if if you could move with us, or maybe at some point move down there with us. You know, because you said earlier about the jobs and stuff and how expensive it is to live. And that's why Jessica and I have like side hustles, you know, music and modeling and the store now that I'm going to have to get used to saying, you know, I've always had the vlog and podcast, but I don't really make any money from that. I make a little bit of money from my music and stuff, but, you know, like my night jobs and my normal job and Jessica's career that she has. And that's what we're always doing. So we're going to just pick that up and move it down to Orlando and try to maintain life down there with, you know. Hell yeah, dude. But like, I mean, that, that's definitely a possibility. Because, I mean, that's not really much different living than Alabama living, really. Mm. Touche. That is true. So, I mean, so, yeah. that's, that's something I would fall right in line with, dude. Like, I... I, I mean, hell, I, I like Pensacola. Like, I, I like going over to Pensacola and um, Milton and all that over there. I would want to live in Milton or Cantonment over Pensacola. Pensacola is great. It's one of my favorite towns to like go see music and fart around and drink and bullshit. But <clears throat> I think now that I live so close to it for so long, I prefer Mobile over Pensacola simply for like the traditional oh, original oh, aspect. Oh, 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 oh. Kind of dirty, bro. Well, I, I mean, I don't, I don't, I consider Mobile and Pensacola equally as dirty because there's clean places of Pensacola, just like there's clean places of Mobile. But I think everybody's pretty familiar with the filth side of, of both of them. I'm just saying, dude. Like, there was a big difference because I've been to both. There was a big difference when I was growing up down there. I know, but I feel like, and no offense, I feel like because of our upbringings, I've, I've seen. A little bit more of the culturist side uh, of both towns than you, at least more familiarly, from familiarly, familiarly. <laughs> well, I remember when I was a kid going to the the fairs every year. Okay, now that's not a fair spectrum, dude. No okay, pun intended. <laughs> And then plus, Get it? I don't, that, that's not necessarily safe to say, dude. dude cause, like, it's not I, fair I went, to say. <laughs> uh, Nailed it. I, uh, <laughs> I, when I worked hey, for... Hey, for tolerating me, dude. <laughs> I mean, I'm, I'm literally the same way, so okay, I, nice. I understand. Good times. So... Good times. But, um, 
when I was working for um, uh, Quick Dry, that carpet cleaning company. Yeah, I remember that. I, I, was in, I was in and out of Mobile and Pensacola all the fucking time. And you prefer Pensacola it, over Mobile? Hell yes. Hell yes. Like, and definitely rather, I would rather work in Pensacola at night over there rather than be in Mobile at night. Okay, see, I feel like you heard me say I fucking hate Pensacola. Mobile's the best. I didn't say that. I do love Pensacola very, very, very much. But I just, over the years, if you would have caught me three years ago, I would have said Pensacola is 10 times better. But I just prefer Mobile now for the culture over Pensacola because I guess like Jessica and I going on dates and me playing shows out there and meeting people that weren't very becoming individuals and doing the whole rigmarole of record buying and trading and like I said shows and the people in that business it's just like man fuck all that bullshit I prefer the people in Mobile on a more personal level because when I started loving Mobile I didn't approach Mobile with like the money eyes like I did Pensacola as far as music and content and just other shit that involved making friends or money or some sort of social circle work for me there in mobile it was just like oh me and jessica are out here just to eat and it was just us and it's like or like oh me and my mom used to go over there when i was eight years old during christmas and it was a little bit more innocent minded personally for me that's pretty much all i know no reason to fucking hang me dax goddamn <laughs> I, I know, bro. i'm just kidding i'm just kidding man i'm just fucking with you i'm just fucking with you I'm just fucking with you. So, all right, look, let's cut topic real quick, dude. Tell me, um, before, you know, we got about, I don't know, maybe another seven minutes on this podcast. Tell me right now, one thing that you're listening to that's changing your life and one thing that's more underground that you think should be bigger. And then I want you to end it with what you got. That was your favorite gift that you got for Christmas. Go. Okay, well, right now I've been listening to a lot of, um, it's a guy named Sean James, and he does, a, like, a lot of different acoustic stuff, but, like, he sings and plays uh, the guitar, and he also works a little, like, uh, he works like a bass drum with one foot and like one of those little like uh, a devil makes three kind of shit type Abbott thing. Brothers kind of shit yeah gotcha and like he's just a multi-talented dude and like the guy's got a set of pipes on him as well cool and he's just a bird cool. looking dude man like I mean he's got the long hair big beard you should look him up but I think like I, well I think you said who was yeah, uh, give me something that you just think that is kicking ass right now that's out and then you know maybe you know okay. people would be for more you know more familiar with and then maybe give me an underground but it sounded like you started with the underground so that's good you can go did, you can I go, did you can start go. Out. this is not this is not an articulated podcast you can go which any way you want my man but that was just what come to first but anyway um honestly dude i like um i've been listening to a lot of yellow wolf and um mxpx uh a, a little bit of logic and i mean dude you're, you're basically know, explaining think, one third of my library right there my man that's what i'm talking about well, those I some mean, like minor like, threat and some reggae and like, a little bit of yeah. like chill lo-fi hip-hop you got it you you put me on For now. the mxpx I, I just fucking ran with that dude mxpx I, is one of my all-time favorite bands in the entire motherfucking existence of the world like that's been a band that's been with me since i was nine years dude, old and i love those dudes it, so much it, shout it, out to mxpx thank you for making good music that i never knew about them and like Dude, they lay the hammer I down, don't they? That kind of shit, dude. Like, I just, I never, I never ran across them. Well, but 
You're welcome. Those, those, uh, <laughs> that's that's kind of that's kind of what I'm listening to right now. Well, hell yeah, dude. And then obviously the, that Sean James guy. I oh well, I I listen to uh, Benjamin Todd too. I miss, I listen to him and Tyler Childers a lot. Like, yeah, my mom's I'm been big on Tyler Childers. Do what? My mom has been big on Tyler Childers. You're, you're not big on him? I'm not big on him, but my mother is. Oh. I said my mother's big on him, but yeah, since you said me, I, yeah, you're right, I'm not. I'm not big on Tyler Childers at all. I, I don't, I, like, I don't like everything he does, but I, I guess I just like his style of playing, really. If I'm going to listen to something like that, I'm going to listen to Charlie Crockett or Ben Todd or the Lonely Dog Street Band or... Uh, Avid Brothers, Band of Horses, Jim James, Dude, My Morning. Fuck, you know what I mean? Something. I, 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 fuck, with, nah. I fuck with that Benjamin Todd dude. Like he is. Ben Todd's the shit. Uh, but, uh, knees. I gotta get a soundboard for this podcast so I can just hit certain like funny buttons for things like that, so right? I don't have to make my own soundboard. <laughs> <laughs> But, um, anyway, yeah, tell me what you got for Christmas that was your favorite. Probably what I got for Christmas were the turk beads for my dab rig. Cool. Hell yeah, man. That was probably my favorite. The weighted blanket's really cool, too, though. Yeah, I feel that. I could see that. Yeah, man, I got a lot of really cool gifts. I'm pretty um, stoked and blessed, and I didn't know. Was, every year, I always tell people, I'm just like, I just not, I did not expect that Christmas that I got, and I always get a badass Christmas. So I'm pumped. But yeah, dude, I'm I'm glad to hear that, man. I'm glad to hear that you had a. I'm sorry to hear that your engagement got fucked up, but um, I'm glad that you had a good Christmas, though, man. It happens, bro. It happens. But. It wound up working out, and we had a good Christmas anyway. Hell yeah, dude. Hell yeah. So. Well, all right, man. Well, look, I guess that's uh, that's about it. We're almost at an hour here. I guess that's uh, it's about a good time. Um, I appreciate you being on the podcast with me tonight, my man. Before, let's see. I guess this this will be my last podcast of the year, technically. Oh. I'm closing it out. Closing it out. Save the best for last, my brother. Damn. Do I'm going to be one of the first for next year, so... That's true. That's true. I've got... Well, Bailey and Dan were supposed to be on uh, this weekend, but Bailey bailed. Um, and then he ended up talking me into buying a couch from him after that. He bailed on the... <laughs> po- <laughs> he bailed on the podcast and then talked me into buying a couch from him. So uh, it's just gonna be me and Dan on that, uh, but um, yeah, this weekend I got a, a podcast with Dan, and then I got a podcast this week also with Jessica. We're gonna shoot another podcast together. We're gonna do an audio podcast, her and I, though. Awesome. What's what's up, dude? Like you, you're doing it every time I talk to you, you always sound like you got a full schedule. Well, I keep try. I try to keep it that way with like something with like the mu- you know well, I mean, vlog, I the podcast music you know that actually comes last first it's you know with family and work and friends and then well, yeah, I mean, within my free time I squeeze in like binge watching shows and documentaries and then making my own little mini movies for the vlog channel and then contacting friends that I think are interesting for podcast and making music when I feel something and I don't know. It's selling clothes when I have too many, or when I find something cool that I can't wear but somebody else could. I don't know. Whatever the fuck, I always fill it so with something like, creative. Is it is it March that we're doing? Uh, when when are we going? To yeah, dude. Let's there? yeah, when like you- either the, right as of now, tentatively, first or second week of March. First or second week of March. And we'll shoot a we'll shoot a potty then too, man. Dude, that's, that's, it, it's gonna be good. Man. Dude, it'll be a location destination podcast. Can you believe that shit? First one. Right. Not true. Not true. Second one. First one was Friends Fest last year. Just to clarify. 
But it's gonna be cool regardless. It's gonna be dope. That is true. Well, look, man, look, I, I love you, and I, I miss you, man, and I wish I could um, see you more often, you know what I mean? It sucks. We have to, like, communicate through speakerphone phone calls at work and podcast episodes, but, you know, I guess any way we can. Yeah, but at least we had that, right? That's true. It's very, very true. Very true. All right, man, well, um, I'm going to stop this podcast, but I'm going to uh, leave you on the line. And uh, okay. we'll chat a little bit more if you're cool with that. Hell yeah. All right, man. Well, um, like I said, I appreciate you coming to this podcast. I love you very much. The viewers uh, loved your previous you podcast to me. this, man. I mean, they they ate that shit up, dude. I got like 60, 70 views uh, in like, yeah. just like a day or so, which is a lot for our podcast. We have a low volume podcast, but. You know, when you only have like a hundred subscribers and a hundred views per episode, I mean, that grows throughout a few weeks. Yours, like sh- yours and Dustin's, just shot right the fuck up there. So, people like you, you know. Oh yeah, that's what's up. Uh, I love being on the podcast, dude. Hell yeah. And like, like you said, it always like comes natural. Like you know, but you've known each other for so long that it just it ain't shit to bring up conversation and you know bullshit you know well, what i mean that kind of circles back around to our previous conversation of of um having like solidified solid group of people around you that are your friend circle you know that yeah end up being your friend circle that you didn't really technically know was going to end up being your friend circle you know what i mean exactly yeah. exactly well, look, man. All right, so this is episode 30. I don't know. It's like fucking like episode 118 and a half. Um, anyway, what? A- <laughs> All right, man. Well, look, I love you. Um, ep- ep- episode episode 30. I think it's really like 37, to be honest. Dax Norris. Um, one of my good friends, best friends. This info is link in description. Um, it's all in the description. Um, yeah, man, I appreciate you. We will talk to you soon for part three, right? Yeah. Hell yeah. <laughs> all right, Bubba. All right, man, we'll be good. Talk to you soon. Bye.